Hi, everyone. My name is Derek Lane, and I'm from lanesaudio.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to take a live performance recorded in multi-track and snap it to a constant tempo using Reaper. For those of you who may find what I'm doing in this video to be really cool, but a little complicated, you can do what a client did a couple of weeks ago and go to lanesaudio.com and click the contact link. Send me a message and then have me sort out the material. In fact, my client was so happy with the result that that inspired this video. And uh, we'll just say that my client was inspired by the Breaking Down a Mashup video series, but I'm not really sure if that's so, but we'll say it is because it sounds good, okay? And uh, so does this material we're working with, uh, considering what it is. It was recorded by yours truly a couple years ago using a Behringer X32 and an HP laptop. And it was from a gig featuring my cousin's cover band. Now, because it was a small venue, we didn't use a lot of mics because the room didn't need a lot of reinforcement, which led to some compromise in the recording. But... I messed around and got a rough mix that's good enough for this, anyway. Let's bring in the metronome. And, uh, yeah, it's starting to drift. Now, if I jump to measure 15 by pressing Control-J and then typing 15 and pressing Enter, You can hear we're way off by that point. So how are we going to fix this without taking all day to do it? Well, what we're going to do here is use an action that Gianluca Apolero of Access for Music created. What he did was string together a crazy amount of actions in Reaper to get us an action that will take audio under your edit cursor, which would represent a whole note or a half note or a quarter note or an eighth or whatever of an actual song. Allow you to set the grid division to what would make sense and then invoke this action to have that audio snapped to that grid division, be it the whole note, the half note, the quarter, the eighth, the sixteenth, or all the triplets. And for those of us who are using Osara, you will be happy to know that that action already exists and it is bound to Alt-Shift-I. But for those who do not have Osara, it's okay, because I'm going to show you what Gianluca used to make this custom action, which he called Add Stretch Marker to Cursor and Snap to Grid. And to show you this, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to route my screen reader such that you can hear what I hear. Press F4 to go to Reaper's Actions dialog. Actions dialog. Tab three times to get to the Find Shortcut button. Click, find shortcut, button, find key or mid. Press Alt Shift I. Actions. Tab six times to the edit button and press that. Pressed. And then edit tab custom. an additional six times to get to the list of actions which make up the uh, custom action in question here. List to list. And now I'm going to have NVDA, which is my screen reader of choice, read everything to you just in case the visuals aren't doing what I hope they're doing. Item, add stretch marker at cursor one of ten. Move edit cursor back one beat, no seek, two of ten. Time selection, set start point three of ten. Move edit cursor forward one beat, no seek, four of ten. Move edit cursor forward one beat, no seek, five of ten. Time selection, set end point six of ten. Item, snap stretch markers in time selection to grid seven of ten. Go to start of time selection eight of ten. Move edit cursor forward one beat, no seek, nine of ten. Time selection, remove time selection ten of ten. So that's pretty involved, and uh, we can break that down if necessary in case... In the future, you're curious as to how it works and why it needs to do all of that to make this moving and stretching action happen. But for now, just trust me, it works and it's awesome. And to show you how awesome it is, I'm going to use it in a very imprecise way. I'm going to press escape twice to get back to Reaper's main window. And then I'm going to fix things so that when I do something to one item, everything else follows along so we don't have to edit everything individually and to do this i'm going to 11 kick one item focus on my kick drum track press control left arrow one yb solos to 
to navigate to the beginning of the item containing the kick drum on this track, press Control A so that all of the items are selected in this project, and then press Control G to group them. Now, although I got no verbal feedback from the screen reader when I did all of that, it's okay because I know those actions work. But there's one more thing to do before we start moving audio around, and that is simply to put a stretch marker at the beginning of the project here, the beginning of this item, and thus the beginning of all items, so that I have an anchor. This way, as audio will stretch in time or shrink in time, there's an anchor there and nothing will move from the start because the first few measures in the start of this are good. I want to leave that stuff alone. So let's press Control M to put our stretch marker down. My apologies for not knowing how to do this visually. I really wish I did. If someone does, please comment so that I can uh, have a resource in this video that will help more people than just those of us who use Reaper the way I do. Hit play. We're good. Let's jump to measure 10. Play. Control J, type 10, press what enter. We're off. I'm going to press Control Shift 1 to set the grid to whole notes. Grid hole. I'm going to press Shift Tab to go to the previous transient. Transient being like, well, any sort of sharp point in the audio. Obviously, the attack of the kick drum being an example. We're there, right on it. You can really tell that we're on that transient, but off the beat if I Solo. solo this kick drum and we listen to it. See, but if I press Alt Shift I here, set selection end, and then hit play again. There you go. And if I unsolo the kick track, unsoloed, we hear that although I've only messed with stuff on the kick track, grouping the items worked, and everybody's still in sync. All right, let's go into this a little more. Measure 20. I got there by just pressing and holding the page down key. Oh, wow. And we're really, really far off now. All right. Fair enough. So let's press shift tab. Wow. How far off Solo. is that? <laughs> really far, but that sounds kind of cool. But that's not what we want. So I'm gonna press Alt Shift I. Set selection end. And let's do it again. There we go. Close enough for now, anyway. Unsolo. Yeah, we're starting to drift again. Bar go twenty. Bar thirty. Into this here. Set selection Put end. Another down at the whole note. And another, Alt Shift I. Right, and that takes care of that. Bar one. Now if I play this from the top, you'll hear that this is pretty darn good. But in my personal opinion, this is not quite good enough. But because uh, I just basically don't feel like overwhelming you guys, this is all the time I'm going to take for now. But if you stay tuned to this channel, I will show you some more ways to be more precise without going through a lot of pain in the next video.